Welcome to Academic Web Services Training. I'm your host, David Pinter. And in this session, what we're going to be talking about is preparing a Word doc to be converted to a EPUB format. And this right here is a document that I have. And if we scroll through this, you can basically see that there are three main sections into creating a Word doc to an EPUB. Preparing the Word doc, import into Calibre, and then fine tune and edit the CSS and HTML. The first thing that you'll need to do is prepare the Word document. So let's take a look at the steps involved with that. The first thing I would do is I would have my chapter or all my chapters set up inside of a Word document, and then I would just clear all of the formatting. What you wanna do here is you wanna basically select all of the text and then come over here to where you would see your styles and then click down that little arrow here and then click clear formatting. Once it just completely clears all the formatting, have all the text selected, and then apply a regular normal or body copy style to all the text. So all of the text is just uniform, it's all set up. So once all the text is now a body copy, okay, what you wanna do now is stylize the following. The heading one, two, three, heading four, and if you have a heading five, you can do that as well, and that would be, of course, by selecting these up here and then modifying them. You basically want to include your bullets, if you have any bullets, if you have any pull quotes, put your pull quotes in there and just take the pull quotes and just change them to a very basic color and maybe a font, and that's it. Don't try to do anything too fancy. You can do that in Calibre later. If there's any bold text or italicized text, this is the point now where you want to start adding that in. So stylize all those. Next thing you want to do is you want to then insert the following. If there's any images, put them in the place that they would be in the document. Add alt text to the images in Word. Here's where you'll add in your tables. Keep the tables very simple. You can do advanced editing later on if you need to. If you have any sidebars, make sure that you indent those so when we're looking in the CSS file and in the HTML document, they're easy to recognize which ones are the sidebars. If there are any hyperlinks to external web pages, now these are the external ones, make sure that you put them in in Word now. If there are any bold glossary words to the glossary section, and I'll show you that in a document a little bit later. And now finally, save the document. I want to show you a document that's now been set up. So we're going to go over here to uh, design style number four. And what we have here set up is all of this text right here was completely cleared in this entire document. And then I went in and I started selecting all of the sections that would have my heading ones, all of my heading twos, and the heading threes and so forth all the way down the document. Now, this right here was a glossary word. So then I had selected the word and if you take a look here at the hyperlink, you want to edit the hyperlink here, you'll notice that it was in a section at the very bottom, it was this document here. If I scroll to the bottom, it went to the glossary section, okay? So that's where when you click on this in an EPUB or this Word document, it actually will jump to that glossary section since this has been stylized. There was another one here, publication and so forth. Here are the tables, keep the tables very simple. Again, we can then change the borders if we wanted to or change whatever you want inside the document. But if there's an italicized text that's supposed to be in here, make sure you add them in or if there's bold, make sure you add them in now. It just saves you a lot of time later. If you have an external link, make the link now, add it in and edit that link so it goes out to the proper web page. If you have images, Make sure you click on the images here and then right click, and then it says add alt text. If you notice over here, here's the alt text that will go into the HTML file automatically, so I don't have to do it in HTML later once we export this file. So you have that one. Here's another one here of the quadratic equation. You can click on that and you can see that this is the alt text for that one. Here's another image. If you click on this, you'll see this is the alt text for that image. And keep in mind that it'll only add in the alt text. You'll have to physically go in and also add in a title text. So when you hover over the image on a Mac, you'll be able to see the statement pop up over the image. Again, 
Make sure you have all of your sections all set up. This right here is a sidebar. Notice that it's, an, it's indented over to the right. Well, this right here knows that we'll set that up later to stylize this. It doesn't make any sense doing it now, but we'll do it later in Calibre. Here's the example of the pull quote. So if I kind of roll over this right here, it's a blue color, it's italicized, it has a different type of font, and here is the actual style of that. Coming down further, make sure that you create all of your bullets. Here's the bullets in the document. It has bullets, put them in now. It's a little bit more time consuming to do it later. Okay. And here's the glossary section. So when I click on a, a glossary word in the earlier part of the chapter, it will then jump right down to this section here. And then put in your references. Make sure your references are written correctly. And then if you want to bold these, I would bold them now. Just make sure that all your references are correct. And then all you have to do now is just simply just save the document. At that point, we'll go on to our next step and in importing that into Calibri. Okay, now once we've created and completely edited the Word document, what we want to do now is we want to go into and import this document into Calibre. So let me open up Calibre, and what it shows you is this kind of an interface here. It has a, just a, a bunch of buttons up at the top here and so forth, and it has other documents that have been imported and made into an EPUB format. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to come over here and click Add Book. So click on that first button, and now what it's going to ask you is, what book do you want to add? Well, we've been working on this design style for, so I want to click on that one and hit open. Okay, so now it's opened up. The next thing that we want to do is we want to edit the metadata. So click on the second button. And now here is the example of where you would want to either add a cover. You can download a cover, or right, if you want to, you can browse for one, and we'll just add one in here. Like this. Hit open. Okay. There you go. And at this point, you can then add in any kind of metadata information and hit OK. Number three, what we're going to be doing is now converting that book. So now we have this book selected. We're going to hit Convert Book. This is where you get the actual little bit more detail into the book if you want to. But since we're not going to be creating any table of contents and so forth, it's not needed in this particular EPUB. We'll have this information here, all of these, if you want to add that in as well. Okay, so now you just hit OK. So it's doing the job, it's converting the book. It takes a little while, depending on how big the actual book is itself. And once it's done, it'll say here, click to open. So what you want to do now is basically click, and then it brings you to create a folder for you. So now you can just take a look at the EPUB itself. So let's double click that, open it up. Let's take a look at it. Okay. So here is the image that we brought in for the front cover. Here is the text throughout the document. Okay. It looks like everything is in there properly. Like that. Reference is all set, and we can close that document now. And those are the steps to import the document and convert it to an EPUB. Now the final phase, phase three, in completing your EPUB book is actually editing it. So what you want to do is come over here, and you notice this one column, it has like, you know, numbers one, two, three, four, and so forth. Well, click on that first one right there, so the whole um, actual row is highlighted. In this case, it's design style four. And now go up here to where it says edit book icon here, and just click that. So what's going to happen is the Calibre editor is going to open, and then it'll give you an example of the panels that you're going to be working with. One of them is the file browser. As you can see that you have an index.html and you have a style sheet. You also have some images as well and some miscellaneous information um, that goes along with this. What you'll have right here is your coding will be located and in this panel over here is your live preview. So if we come over here and we open up our style sheet, so I'm going to double click this here and you notice a little tab popped up at the top. And I also want to open up this index.html. Now, there's only one HTML file. If we had several chapters, 
you would know that there would be several HTML documents we can work at because they're all basically combined all into one package. And But for right now, we'll just put up this first one here and you can see another tab is opened and you can see now the code of the HTML and off to the right side, the preview of what the EPUB basically looks like. At any time, we can just, if even if I'm over here in the style sheet document, I could select the word over here, like say this heading, and the HTML tab will open up and it's going to direct you to where that one word is located. In this case, we're looking at this word called the class and it's called block underscore. So when we imported the docx file into Calibre, it translated this header one, which is right here, into what's called block underscore. So if I come over here to style sheet, you'll notice right here at the very top, it has block underscore. And here are all of the variables that are applied to this particular header. So if I, for instance, want to increase the size of the header one, I can do that by just clicking and editing that number to say a two. And on the fly, it'll give you a preview of what that's going to look like. And of course, that's a little bit too big. And then we can edit things, including the spaces in between sentences and, and so forth. But in the meantime, you can do that too. We have line heights. If I want to increase the line heights of this, we can do that as well. So you'll notice that it gives you a little bit more gapping space around that. Let me just undo that. And of course you can experiment with the margins, top, right, bottom, and left, and so forth in this as well. This works with points and EMs, by the way. So if I basically put in here, for instance, one EM, like this, you'll notice that you'll see a difference in the space between the header one and the sentence beneath it. So let me undo that. We'll just leave it for right now, but here's where you would edit all of this at any time. You also have this header two, and you'll notice that this one is calling it a block two. So let's go over here to the style sheet. We'll take a look down here at block two, and this is all the information regarding this particular header itself. So again, we can change those at any time. We can change the margins and gaps and so forth. So keep that in mind as well. Scrolling down. Tables, we can edit tables at any time we want. Okay. So here's an example of one of the images. It's saying, the alt tag is saying a college professor and a student shaking hands and so forth. But since it has only an alt tag in, in, included in this, what we're gonna have to do is select that alt tag and copy it, command C or control C on the PC and paste that in. And we're gonna now change that second alt to a title tag. And what that's gonna do now is it's gonna allow us to roll over the image on a Mac and be able to see what the alt tag information is. So we wanna keep that in mind. We can do that for all of these images. As of right now, this is an image. If I roll over the top of this quadratic equation, you notice that nothing comes up. Well, if we change that to a title tag as well, right here, Command C, paste that in, and then change this out to a title. Okay, let it reset, roll over it, and then sure enough, there it is, an image example of the quadratic equation. Now another thing that we wanna do is take a look at the sidebars. So this right here is an example of a sidebar. Now what I wanted to show you here is this. I want to go back to our library and I want to open up this one document I created called Sidebars. So let me take that and I want to edit that book. This will give you an example of where to get different styles of sidebars. In this particular document, you can see at the top right here we have a sidebar. It has a grayish bar on the top and a kind of a gray background and there's nothing along the bottom. So that's, that's one example of sidebar. Here we have the same type of setup, but here we also have a blocked box, so it's a sidebar within side of a sidebar. Here we have a sidebar with a line to the left side and several more with no bars at all. And then we can start getting into some color if we want some more fancy type of a sidebar as well, thinner lines and so forth. But in the meantime, let's go over to this one here and find out exactly what this one is called. So I've selected this and it's called a div class block sidebar. So if I come over here to the style sheet, you'll notice that 
If I scroll down to the sidebars, this is the one right here that's in question. It has this particular gray color here. It has a padding around it. It has a border top and colors and so forth. So what I want to do is I want to just select that and copy it. And now I want to go back to my other document that I was just working on. Okay, and here is the area right now, so the integrated dissertation timeline. What I want to do is I want to go over to here to the style sheet. And I want to add that particular class into this document. So here we go. There's the block sidebar. And now what I want to do is I want to take that line of code that we had right here and copy this. Go back to the document like we had and paste that in. Now, what's going to happen is the whole document is going to end up being that whole sidebar. So what you want to do is you want to know where the end of literature review. So if you come down here, you'll see that right there is literary review. And I want to add a closing div tag in here. So there you go. And that right there should close that up nicely. So as you can see, having the file indented at this point is a really good idea. At this point, what you can do is you can add a P tag to drop the space a little bit above this one here to give you a little bit more space. And you can do whatever you want inside of HTML here, but most of your work is going to be probably done inside of the style sheets, changing and editing your EPUB as you go. So there it is, exporting it as a EPUB and then editing it in the Calibre editor.